Well, I think there's some things that are very important when you're playing a uh, tough team uh, in a tough place to play uh, on the road. Uh, maybe the best team we've played to date so far. Um, they got a great rushing attack, uh, very opportunistic defense that plays very physical and aggressive up front. Um, their offense has controlled the ball extremely well in most games and uh, average 82 plays a game and uh, do a really good job of running the football as well as making explosive plays. So um, got a great returner on special teams. So lots of challenging things for us to prepare for this week. I think turnovers, tackling, discipline execution, focus play in and play out, um, finish uh, is really important. Um, and you got to practice that way every day to be able to play that way when a game comes. And we've had a pretty good work week so far. Um, and, you know, we just got to keep on keeping on and try to clean things up tomorrow so that uh, we have a good chance to go out there and execute and play together and play a good game for 60 minutes. Uh, nothing really new on the injuries. You know, Dig, Diggs and Deshaun Hand are still, Deshaun Hand's out, Diggs probably for sure out, can't really practice yet. So uh, those guys probably won't be playing in the game. With the guys who are from Texas going back for the first time since the hurricane, do you do anything special uh, for, with a trip like this, or is it really important to keep things business as usual? Uh, you know, we did a lot of things for our players in Texas, uh, especially those that had issues uh, relative to the, you know, hurricane or flooding. Um, you know, I haven't really thought about it, to be honest with you. Maybe that's mistake on our part, but I haven't really thought about it. You know, we sort of go on these trips like they're a business trip, and uh, that's what we should be focused on. And, um, you know, it's kind of like my dad used to tell me, you know, when I used to go to work at the station, my girlfriend broke up with me, so I was treating the customers bad. And um, he said, what's wrong with you today? And I said, my girlfriend broke up with me. He said, well, you know, you got one problem, but if you keep treating the customers bad, you're going to have two more. I'm going to fire you, and then I'm going to whip your ass for getting fired. <laughs> so you're not going to have a girlfriend, you're not going to have a job, uh, and you're going to get your tail whipped. So whatever happened in the hurricane happened, and it's a bad thing, and we want to support everybody every way we can. And we certainly did that as much as we could. But if we don't go out there and play a good game, we're going to have all the problems that they had from the hurricane, and then we're going to have a problem that we lost. So it kind of goes back to what my dad said, I think. What have you seen from Texas A&M's pass rush? They, they've put up, a, I think they've had 13 sacks in the last two games. What do they do well up front? Well, they're very athletic up front. they got some very explosive players inside. they got some really good speed rushers on the edge. Um, they pressure a lot. In other words, they are going to rush five and six guys a lot, so they make some of those very athletic guys. Uh, they put you in a position where you have to single block those guys and you can't help much on them. So uh, I think it's the combination of they have a really good scheme and they have really good players who can pass rush and, and finish on the quarterback. And uh, they also create a lot of negative plays, so they create a down and distance where it's in their favor to do that on third down. So uh, this is a really, you know, it's a challenge to be able to block their pressures. Um, and I think if we're going to make any plays down the field and be a good third down team, it'll start with that. Go in the middle here with Michael. Wondering. Hi, Coach. I was just wondering how your uh, rapport with Minka has grown and developed over the years and whether you've ever gained any insight into your own process just by watching him embrace the process. And um, also, some of his teammates say that he's the only one who makes you smile on a regular basis. So I'm curious if you can confirm or deny that. Well, you, you're obviously a national writer. Is that correct? Yeah, because you asked me about four questions there. And the people who come in this room regularly know I can only manage one at a time. All right, so let me try to get this right. All right, first of all, you know, I love Minkum when we were recruiting him. You know, he's great family, great personality. Uh, I still can remember having dinner in his home when we went on a home visit. Uh, and he's the kind of guy that very easy to talk to, um, you know, is interested in a lot of things. 
Um, and so I guess the relationship has grown, uh, but he's just a very easy guy to like. And, um, you know, you like being around him. You certainly like the way he plays. You like the way he embraces and tries to do things that you'd like for him to do, which you refer to as the process of helping him be a better player and helping us be a better team, which he has always been, you know, 100 percent um, committed to. So um, when you have the best players on your team that are really, really good guys, it's always really fun to coach. And he's certainly one of those guys that makes it fun to coach. Did I answer them all? Because I can't honestly remember. I, I think that not just watching him, but I think with all players, uh, you're constantly sort of growing and developing, not necessarily in what you think is important from a process standpoint, because what you're really trying to create is a culture of accountability. Uh, you're trying to define the expectation personally, academically, and athletically for these guys, surround them with people who can support them and help them make good choices and decisions so they can have success. Uh, but also teach them to be responsible for their own self-determination, which is what accountability is, which is what's going to help them be more successful in life. So, um, you know, sometimes you see guys respond differently, you know, to how to get that done. And I think that's a sort of an ongoing process for me. Uh, but the more we do it, the more we learn, I think the more people we can affect. Coach, this is a little off topic, but people talk to you often about spread offense, spread offense. What are your memories of playing Joe Tiller's teams at Purdue? Well, first memory is Drew Brees. Um, he was our, our nemesis at Michigan State. Um, Joe Tiller was ahead of his time. Uh, when most people in those days played more regular type offense, so it was not normal to have to play nickel and dime defenses and be spread out and empty and all over the field. Um, and he did a great job of coaching it, and they did a great job of executing it. Um, and now it's a lot more common to see that style of offense. So I think players, coaches, everybody are more adept at trying to defend it. Um, but we had a very, very difficult time. I mean, we were ahead 21-10. and. With two minutes to go to the game, lining up to kick a 27-yard field goal, and they blocked it and ran it for a touchdown. Got the onside kick, went two minutes, scored, uh, went for two. It was 22-21, and then we got it. 54 seconds, went two minute, went down and hooked it in the dugout, all right, to win the game. So uh, I think I've told you that. Well, then the next year, we were ahead by nine or something. With they blocked the punt, got the ball in two minutes, scored, kicked the field goal. I mean, it was like. And it was obviously, you know, Joe Tiller, his offense and their ability to execute, but Drew Brees didn't hurt much. We'll come here with Michael in the middle. Just given the workload so far this season with the running backs, I guess how how are they doing physically? Uh, how physically fresh are they? Great. I mean, they're all doing great. You know, we work them hard in practice, and um, you know, they all look healthy and try to keep them that way throughout the season. So they. They've done a good job, and you know this week we've got them some extra work because Texas A&M has really good backs. So, you know, a couple of them go over there and run against the defense, get a few more reps, get a few more turns. Helps the defensive players play against really quality guys, and that's what we'll need to do a better job of tackling. We missed 15 tackles in the last game, which was a season high for us. And if we don't tackle better than that, we're going to struggle in this game. Just wondering how you've seen Texas A&M quarterback Kelly Mond progress over the season, and where is he at at this point? Well, he does a great job for them. I think they've done a really good job of doing things that he can do, and he does a really good job of it. Um, um, he's made some really good throws and been very productive in the passing game when they've asked him to do it. Uh, they do a lot of quarterback runs, and he has done a good job of making – I mean, I think he's gained 254 yards rushing so far this season. Um, so – He's done a good job with the quarterback runs. And to have that threat of a guy who can run the ball certainly complements the three really good running backs that they have that can run the ball as well. So um, I think he's done a really, really good job for him. 
You guys have had a lot of young players uh, play early. Um, how unusual is that, and how beneficial it is for their long-term development? Well, it's not unusual at all. If you look at the statistics of how many players we play as freshmen here, we're in the top several teams in the country just about every year. Um, this year, I will say that we have had to uh, end up playing a few guys that we probably wouldn't have played if we hadn't had lost a significant number of guys at certain positions. Uh, so there's two ways to look at it. If they were ready to play, we play them. Uh, we need the help on special teams. Um, but if they're not ready to play, then they need more time to develop, whether it's psychologically, mentally, physically, however it is. So if we have to play them before they're ready, that's not a good thing either. So, But some of these guys have done a nice job of progressing, especially on the defense, where we've had to play some guys because of injuries and We'll probably have to continue to do that throughout the year. I'm not sure if you're aware yet. Um, today, the Division One Council came down with a proposal with the uh, staff sizes. Uh, I think a limit of like 30 for uh, on-campus recruiting. What are your thoughts on that, and, and how will that affect you? Well, I really don't have any because I didn't. I don't know when it came out today, but I didn't have a chance to see it or look at it. Um, you know me, I'm, I'm not for limits in anything. So, uh, but 30 is a lot, but what does that mean? Does that mean some professor in the business school or the dean of the engineering school that talks to somebody for academic reasons? Is that one of those 30 people? I mean, that's not fair to the student athlete. So is it just people that work in our department? Kind of to go back to that freshman question, uh, are you surprised with how well you've been able to finish games with some of the, so many young players in the game still being able to kind of keep your foot on the pedal? Well, it's, 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 I said this in my press conference after the game. Uh, it's one thing to go in a game when it doesn't matter and the other teams wore out tired after 70-some plays. It's another thing to have to go in there and play winning football when the score is nothing to nothing and you're playing against their best player who is not yet tired, worn out, or whatever. So I am happy with the progress that some of these young players are making. Uh, they need to focus on what they need to do to continue to improve because in most cases um, they have plenty to improve on and we're certainly working to help them try to do that so that they can get better. And every player should know that's the intention of every coach is to try to help them get better and improve as a player. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.